Hello. Welcome to worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica, California. I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer, the senior pastor here at Mount Olive, and we're so glad you've joined us for worship on this, the fifth Sunday in Easter. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are reclothed, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, called forth life, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. And now shower us with your spirit, renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear fruit the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Come take a seat and join me as we continue our celebration of the 50 days of Easter. Let's listen to today's story. Jesus knew he wouldn't be able to stay with his disciples forever. He wanted them to understand how much he loved them. God's family is like a vine full of grapes, Jesus said. The disciples raised their eyebrows. What did love have to do with vines and grapes? What happens when a branch is cut from the vine, Jesus asked. The branch can't grow, answered James. When a branch is cut from the vine, it can't grow fruit. But what happens when branches are attached to the vine? They grow lots of grapes, Peter said. Jesus nodded. I am the vine, you are the branches. I love you so you can love others. Jesus looked at his disciples with love. You are my friends. I love you so much that I am willing to give my life for you. That is the greatest love you can have for someone. The disciples were amazed. Jesus would give up everything for them. This is my commandment. Love each other like I love you, Jesus said. Jesus always loves us, no matter what the disciples thought. Jesus is willing to give up his life for us. How can we love each other like that? Jesus smiled at his friends. Love each other. Be joyful. Go and grow fruit. Go and love others so that they know God's love. So God wants us to bear good fruit, to share God's love with those around us. We help others. We are kind. We share God's joy in the world. Say a prayer with me, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, let us grow in our faith and in you. Help us as we share your love and joy in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first lesson is written in the 8th chapter of Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the 26th verse. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Az Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is written in the fourth chapter of 1 John, beginning at the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that the love of God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. One of the principal tenets of the Protestant Reformation, of Martin Luther's break with what we now know as the Roman Catholic Church, was the issue of salvation. We Lutherans call it justification by grace through faith. That is, God's love and salvation for us as a free gift through Jesus Christ. And that's the heart of our Lutheran faith. We do not earn God's love. We do not earn our salvation that was assured for us once and for all times by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is no God up in heaven with a big book writing down what we've done right or wrong. And we do not earn our salvation by good works. Our salvation is already guaranteed through Jesus Christ. Our good works, Luther taught, spring from, follow, God's love for us. Because God first loves us and has saved us, we are then free to love others. That's basic Lutheran theology. But I gotta be honest with you. Again and again, surveys show that most Lutherans really do not believe this. Most Lutherans have what we might call a traditional Roman Catholic view. It's very close to a Muslim view, that our salvation is earned through good works. Most Lutherans still believe that what we do and do not do helps earn or prevent our salvation. <laughs> Martin Luther may have rebelled against it, but today most Lutherans wrongly still believe we must do good works to earn our place in the heavenly kingdom. I've preached on this so many times here at Mount Olive, but I gotta be honest with you, I still hear this too often, even from our own members. But it's not a new problem. At the time of our second lesson for today, the one from 1 John, at the time that was written, which was about AD 100, the issue was already common in the small but growing Christian community. So late in life, St. John wrote what we call the book of 1 John, and nowhere are John's words clearer about salvation than in the text we heard read today. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. This love expressed in good works to and with others is the result of God's love, not the way of receiving God's love. Christians, John writes, can be bold on the day of judgment, because of God's love for us, and because, as John also writes, as God is, so are we in this world. Since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. Now, as you heard it read, the second lesson might have seemed a bit repetitious, and that is because it is. Somehow early Christians needed to hear it again and again, just as we do. When we can have preschool chapel, Jeremy and I sing a song with the children. It's called, God's banner over us is love. God's love for us is assured. We love others because God first loved us. Now, I think you are like me. All of us need to hear this again and again and again. We need to hear it again and again. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. And this leads us to Jesus' words from the Gospel lesson that I just read to you, also from John, this time John's Gospel. Abide in me as I abide in you. I find this particular phrase really helpful because without it, much of what today's gospel text has Jesus saying, John has Jesus saying, sounds like a threat. Abide in me or else. Be pruned, wither, be thrown into the fire, and die. All appearing to be voiced as a threat to bully people into staying loyal and faithful. But that's the important words. Jesus does not just say, abide in me. Rather, he says, abide in me as I abide in you. And that changes everything. 
The other statements about pruning and withering and the rest are not threats of intimidation, but rather they're statements of fact, description of what happens when we do not abide in Jesus, when we are separated from Jesus' love and acceptance, when we run or hide or think we can do it all on our own or decide to stand alone or whatever. Branches do not do well when they are separated from the vine. <laughs> At best, they're like cut flowers, have a burst of color and bloom, and then fade and wither. And again, we have to look at the context for this passage, our gospel today. First, at this time in Jesus' life and teaching, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure, and he wants to assure them of his presence even when life gets hard. And as we know well, it's about to get very hard for Jesus and his disciples. Second, at the time this text was written down, the early Christian community from which John writes has likely been thrown out, rejected by family and friends, and they feel pretty alone and, orf alone and orphaned. They are quite literally feeling like they're being cut down. John, through his retelling of Jesus' words of farewell and comfort, is offering a different frame of reference by which, we, which, by which they and we can reinterpret their experience. It is not being cut down, but pruned. At the same time, John is making a promise. Jesus is with you, abiding in you, and will not let you go. Important words for people who will feel cut down by circumstances. Important words for people who feel cut down by circumstances. That group, of course, is not limited to Jesus' disciples 2,000 years ago, but aptly describes the feeling harbored by many of Jesus' disciples today, people like you and me. The mom just trying to keep it together after more than a year of having to be both teacher and mom, and for many, trying also to hold down a job. The kid has been cyberbullied for so long for just being different that he or she is beginning to believe what the haters are saying. The professional whose employment was, was terminated and despite the headlines which now say the economy is recovering quickly, has no decent job prospects. The recently and unexpectedly bereaved and devastated parent, or the caretaker who's losing a beloved spouse day by day, little by little, to cancer or Alzheimer's. There are, of course, countless other examples you and I could list of persons who feel cut down, maybe mowed down, by life and circumstances. And John offers them, too, a different frame. Jesus is with you, abiding in you, holding on to you, loving you, and will not let you go. Which means that what may feel like a death cut is mere pruning, and that growth is ahead, and new life will come. Jesus' words of comfort and presence are for you and for me. Jesus is with you and for you and will not let you go. Abide in me. Alone, these words are our at best good advice and encouragement, and at worst, a threat. But abide in me as I abide in you. These words are pure promise, gracious words of presence and providence, words that need to be shared, whether shouted from the rooftops or whispered in a moment of tender and vulnerable stillness. Abide in me as I abide in you. Abide in me as I abide in you. The God whose banner over us is love, the same God loves us, and abides in us, today and always. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words we know as the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true not God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers of intercession after each prayer petition, I will say, hear us, O God. And then we will all say together, your mercy is great. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence 
that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all, especially the children coming across our southern border to reunite their families. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit, especially all those who have been saints in our lives. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Once again, thank you for joining us for worship on this, the fifth Sunday in Easter. These announcements get repetitious for you as they do for me, but they're no less important. Especially if you're new to watching our worship service here at Mount Olive, welcome. And if you'd like to get on our email list to hear about every new service each week, send me an email to pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org and I'll get you on the list. Every Saturday around 3 p.m., I send out an email with the URL, the link to the new worship service for that Sunday that you can watch right then, you can watch on Sunday, and you can watch anytime. So if you'd like to be part of that list and aren't, send me that email. You can also send me an email if you'd like to help us with these services. As you've seen in our worship services, we have people who read the first two lessons, lead the big prayer, who share a Pastor in the Peace way. We have guest musicians. If you'd like to help in our worship service in any way, you guessed it, write to me, pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org, and we'd be glad to help you get on the list. And I always say, but always with thanksgiving, how important it is, how wonderful it is, and how grateful we are for your prayers and financial support for our congregation, especially in these safer at home days. You can make a gift through Mount, to Mount Olive through the U.S. mail, a check payable to Mount Olive, sent to us at 1343 Ocean Park Boulevard, Santa Monica, California, 90405. Local folks can put their donation, a check, or cash through the secure mail slot in our church office door, and there are two ways to give to us through the internet. One is through Venmo, venmo.com slash Mount Olive, and the other is through our website, mtolivelutheranchurch.org. At the top of the page is a giving button, and you just follow the instructions to make a gift by credit card or your savings or checking account, one gift or a regular gift, whatever, however you want to do it. However you support us, we are so thankful and grateful. Thank you. For our thanksgiving for the word, after each paragraph, I will say, for your word of life, O God, and we'll all say together, we give you thanks and praise. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on a desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Now send your spirit of truth, O God, Rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love 
for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now let's pray the prayer we know, the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs>